Senator Seward. Thank you, Madam Acting Deputy President. I rise tonight to, that, to speak about the marine bioregional planning process that is currently being undertaken around our great country. We are now at the final stages of one of the most comprehensive environmental assessment projects Australia has ever attempted, the development of five bioregional plans to cover the southwest, the northwest, the north, the Coral Sea and the temperate east. This process has the potential to establish a network a national network of marine protected areas based on rigorous scientific analysis. Marine reserves and marine sanctuaries are the best tool we have to protect our marine environment. They protect fish stocks by increasing the size and number of fish, support fisheries management, build the resilience of marine ecosystems to impacts like climate change and boost tourism and recreation, as well as providing employment in tourism, research and sea country management. This project is critical because Australia is home to an amazing diversity of marine environments, yet less than 1 per cent of the five major bioregions are protected from threats such as oil and gas spills, seabed mining and trawling. Having completed comprehensive surveys of the ecological values of these bioregions, draft maps of the proposed reserves have now been released for public comment. The objective of the bioregional planning process is to recognise that our, that our oceans contain many iconic, ecologically important and fragile places that deserve protection, exactly the same as any other precious environments such as, the, as Kakadu and Uluru, and the same way that they are protected as national parks. Yet in each bioregion, the level of marine protection provided for in these draft plans does not even meet the minimum scientific standards. The size and connectivity of the marine parks in the drafts are woefully inadequate to address the challenges of overfishing, pollution and climate change, or to provide a basic level of protection for the dual threats of, of mining and trawling. I challenge the government to show greater courage and ambition by developing final marine reserve maps that provide a substantially higher level of marine protection. It is a depressing state of affairs when mining and trawling economic interests with easily quantifiable dollar figures are registered by the government, while conservation values have to be repeatedly shown to be politically palatable and in the best interests of the country and its population. Nowhere demonstrates this better than the North West, where oil and gas development has taken the highest priority. Yet the impact of an oil spill could be ecologically and environmentally devastating. This is not worst-case scenario scaremongering either. Australians experienced the de devastation of a spill less than, or just on two years ago after the Montara project spilled millions of litres of oil into the oceans off the Kimberley coast. Similarly, the whole world was fixated, as they should have been, on the deep water hor uh, hor horizon spill in the Gulf of Mexico. And in both, in both cases, the responsible companies have been granted new licences and new opportunities to explore and mine and drill in our oceans. Indeed, the recent expansion in the number and size of the exploration licences in the northwest substantially reduces the opportunity to establish marine reserves, and it is disappointing that so many new exploration leases have been granted while the bioregional assessment processes is, is still um, taking place including nine new leases just announced last Friday in the middle of the public consultation period. This is a blatant effort to lock in oil and gas and their access around iconic areas such as the precious Ningaloo Marine Area, Shark Bay and the Rolly Shoals, all areas that I'm passionately committed to making sure that we have into the future. It is it is permanently excluding much of these areas from even a possibility of a marine reserve. But I am glad to see that there is a growing awareness that conserving our marine environment also has tangible economic worth. Research by the Centre of Policy Development has helped establish the financial worth of our marine economy and the value of conserving it into the future. CD, CPD estimated that the value that is currently unrecognised in economic accounts was equivalent to $25 billion a year, while in comparison, offshore oil and gas exploration and production is estimated to be worth, guess what, $24 billion annually. This, they have also highlighted that tourism accounts for one quarter of the recognised value at $11 billion a year, while commercial fishing accounts for only $2 billion. When set out this way, the economic imperatives of trawling and mining should no longer dominate the debate. 
And because the EPBC Act requires the minister to consult the public on any draft plan, the public has an opportunity to demonstrate their support and, and, and um, put in some comment on the le levels of protection that have been proposed. So far, consultation has shown the high level of interest that Australian people have in protecting the marine environment. 39,000 submissions were made to the South West proposed reserves, overwhelmingly in favour of increased protection. I can only hope that this will be matched by a willingness from the minister and the government to be more ambitious when releasing the final maps for the South West, an area that I have fought long and hard to ensure um, gets um, a level of uh, the marine environment gets a level of protection. Similarly, I hope that the Australian people will continue to voice their desire for marine protection in the, in the other four bioregions and make submissions to the draft um, of marine reserves and plans. Before I can conclude, I would like to, like to point out and acknowledge that there are a number of committed and passionate marine conservationists here in Parliament House this week. Together they have prepared reports assessing the most important parts of Australia's oceans, including iconic reports for the South West, the North West and the North bioregions, which I encourage you to look at to better understand the amazing marine treasures these, these bioregions have to offer. Australia's ocean territory is the third largest on the planet and the richest in biodiversity. From the Perth Canyon in the South West, where blue whales come to feed, to the humpback haven off the Kimberley coast, tropical waters of, the north, of North East Arnhem Land dotted with sacred sites, endemic corals and colourful fish, the Coral Sea, one of the last places on our blue planet where ocean giants such as whales, sharks, tuna, marlin and swordfish can still be found in big numbers, and the Lord Howe um, seamount chain that we, and rise which supports important habitats for sharks and seabirds in the temperate east. These icons show us that what we stand to lose but I hope that we can be more ambitious in our expectations and avoid the charges levelled by Dr Cullum Roberts in his Unnatural History of the Sea that, and quote, those charged with looking after the sea set themselves un unambitious management targets that simply attempt to arrest declines rather than rebuild to the richer and more productive states that existed in the past, end quote. If we want to rebuild our marine life and ensure it is retained into the future, only a full network of scientifically derived marine protected areas can deliver us this outcome. We have some of the most beautiful marine life on this planet. We have some of the most important biodiversity in the, our marine environments in Australia. We have a duty to protect this. It should be our honour to protect this most wonderful marine environment.